Thank you very much, Lily, and thank you all for being here. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and also thanks so much to the entire Earthshot science team. They're pretty much all co-authors on this and really helped out a lot. Um, first of all, what is Earthshot? Um, so Earthshot Labs is a company. It's an environmental services company. And we basically exist to connect project proponents uh, with financing. A project proponent is someone who's going to actually go out and make sure a tree planting project happens and it works on the ground. And so those people need to connect, uh, need a connection with financing, you know, to get money to get their project off the ground. And those, those people who are supplying the financing want to know how quickly those trees will grow and how many carbon credits they might be able to expect from such a project. Um, and so we have a bunch of tech and science that we employ to uh, facilitate that. Um, we have a tree measurement app that we use for monitoring, reporting, and verification, or MRV, um, that we're developing that's called Biome. Um, and we also get data, a lot of it from literature reviews, um, as well as remote sensing. And we put a lot of this together into carbon projections. Uh, so we have our Land OS system, which uh, displays those to the user. And I'll talk a lot more about the carbon projections now. Um, so how do we actually do those? Um, so it turns out in forestry, there's, uh, there's one sort of uh, dominant uh, curve fit formula that's often used to predict how quickly trees will grow or how quickly uh, biomass will accumulate on a stand. And it's a Chapman Richards curve. It's sort of like a, uh, almost quasi-logistics slash sigmoidal curve shape, which you can uh, very flexibly adjust to different uh, forms by, by changing these parameters. Um, and a lot of the work that we do is collecting locally appropriate data to our project sites and then doing individual curve fits for each project. Um, and that requires a lot of individual attention and time on each project, as I'm sure you might imagine. And wouldn't it be nice if we had some sort of global map for these parameter values that we could just employ and sort of plug and play every time we see a new project? Um, and so that's what this, um, this effort here is all about. So we took uh, the Chapman-Richards equation um, it turns out most of these parameters um, in the equation, y max is uh, basically a maximum potential biomass for some area. You can actually get that from a, a recently published paper, which is great. Um, and then there's data to support estimating other parameters. Some of these parameters are often assumed, like p is often assumed to equal 3, as we do here. Um, and so basically, we really have one unknown out of this whole thing, which is k. Um, and so that's what we're building a machine learning model for, is predicting K on a global scale. Um, the data sources that make this possible are great and are really only recently coming into availability. Um, Susan Cook Patton from the Nature Conservancy led a nature paper in 2020, which aimed to collect all naturally generating forest measurements, um, which are pairs of age and biomass uh, in all places around the world. Um, as well as a geographic location, also very important. Um, and so we can use that data set in combination with that uh, global potential biomass raster I mentioned um, uh, to, to basically calculate K. And we did that for our training set here. Actually, this is uh, cross-validation, so it's both the training set and the testing set. Um, and yeah, a lot of data comes from sites with just one measurement. You can see down there, but, but some sites have several measurements per site. Um, one, one thing to note here is this uh, data set is only for naturally regenerating forests. So these are places where someone just didn't do anything and just let trees grow. Maybe they took the cows or the cattle off the land or stopped cutting the trees down or something. Um, and so this is distinct from, say, uh, a planted forest or a plantation forest. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of literature views that are extending this work. Um, uh, if you want to attend Jacob Bukowski's talk on Wednesday, he will talk about a uh, follow-on to this where he's uh, doing this for motto species plantations. Um, and there's uh, several other follow-ons coming up as well. Um, so for this effort, we started with a, a set of 60 environmental covariates, which are pretty typically used for studies like this. Um, and um, one of the questions I was asking was, well, do we really need all 60 of those? Can we use uh, fewer of them and still get as good a model performance? Um, and also, can we actually try to explain how these machine learning models work? That's a, that's a nice thing to be able to know and to talk to people about, and convince people that they make sense. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so we did some backward selection with these uh, features uh, in a cross-validation framework. 
um, with a, a, a site a grouping on the site with the CV fold, so to, so as not to have the same site uh, measurements in a training and testing fold. Um, and we were happy to see that we were able to get pretty pretty similar performance to an existing effort um, uh, where they were you know Susan's original paper used linear growth rates, so you have sort of a linear growth model. And uh, one of the advances here is we're actually using a biologically realistic curve, the Chapman Richards curve, and so. Um, uh, so there's a few novel things about this that, that uh, make it more convincing. Um, so our model wound up having five features in it, um, not too many. Um, they're mostly temperature and precipitation related. There's some interesting things in there that definitely warrant some further investigation. Um, uh, the top uh, most important feature was isothermality, which is a measure of how large your day to night temperature swings are relative to annual temperature swings. So those two things are similar, then you wind up with a higher isothermality, as typically happens in the tropics, where there's really not much annual temperature variation to begin with. Um, so tropical trees go faster, it makes pretty good sense. Um, some other interesting things are more complex relationships that we need to look more into with the, the drought index and the soil moisture, some interesting nonlinearities there. Um, wind speed was an interesting one, um, and it makes total sense if it's a very windy place, trees might have a harder time growing up and attaining their eventual maximum biomass that they're headed for. So one of the, one of the great things about this, and we, we are developing our own open source package, it's maybe not quite so far along as some of the other ones out there, but um, we, we enabled, uh, you know, we, we wanted to use XGBoost for this. Um, we also just wanted to be able to use any machine learning framework in general that we were interested to use. So we, um, we have developed a package that takes um, a large area of you know, dense feature, uh, like a, you know, a whole continent of Africa, for example, tiles it out into individual CSV files you can use for training your model, um, and then also doing inference. You can do inference and um, you know, tile out a whole large area and sort of, uh, you know, with, any, with any machine learning framework that you were interested to use offline. And um, this is a pretty new result, so I don't have any insights to share with you other than to say that there are some interesting looking patterns here, and um, we're very interested to explore those uh, more fully. Uh, but we're very excited to see that we could produce a global scale map, and um, we'll be able to inform our projects with this. Yeah, so that's it. Um, so yeah, in summary, you know, we were able to use machine learning to do nonlinear modeling of these curve fit parameters, which is a, a new thing. Um, and also, you know, see, do we, can we do a simpler model? Can we explain it and see how it works? And it turns out we can. Um, and yeah, we'd love to um, share our resources with the world, especially in the form of this uh, library that can get data out of Earth Engine, allow you to build models offline, tile things back together with your inference and put it back into Earth Engine if you want to. Um, and there's a whole bunch of additional stuff that we could do. Um, and uh, we have some ideas there. I'd love to hear any ideas you guys have. If you have any interest in Earthshot business-wise or academic collaboration-wise, we're very open to that. We collaborate with several labs around the world. Um, I'd love to hear from you. So, thank you. All right, we've got time for one question. That's a great question. One of the reasons we wanted to find a smaller set of predictors, because indeed the bioclimate predictors are all incredibly covariant. Um, so we did an initial step where we uh, removed correlated predictors after ranking them in, in, a, in, a, in a step before that. Um, and there's, there's other interesting work going on. I think, um, uh, yeah, principal components would be another way to do it. Um, many, many approaches there. Thank you. 